what's going on everybody welcome back to my youtube channel let's solve this math question which says find the values of x for which x squared minus 2 is equal to the square root of x plus 2 well because of the square root on the right hand side there's going to be a condition attached to this question because what we have on the right hand side is positive it shows that what we have inside of the square root which is x plus 2 must be bigger than or equal to 0 to make it a real value so we're going to be taking this condition into consideration when we want to determine our final answer all right so our first step towards solving this question will be for us to take the square of both sides in order to get rid of the square root. So we have x squared minus 2. We're going to be taking the square of the left hand side. This is equal to the right, right hand side we have the square root of x plus 2. We're also going to be taking the square of the right hand side. Now. Taking the square of the left, we're going to have, well, the left-hand side is of the form a minus b all squared, which is equal to a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. So let's write this in this form. So we'll have x squared raised to the power of 2 minus 2 times x squared times 2 and then plus 2 squared very good and this is equal to the right hand side the square cancels out the square root so that we have x plus 2 very good so from indices powers multiply so 2 times 2 gives 4 so we have x to the fourth minus 2 times x squared times 2 we give 4x squared and then plus 2 squared is 4 and this is equal to x plus 2 very good now our next step will be for us to subtract x from both sides so I'll subtract x from the left I also subtract x from the right now let's also subtract 2 from both sides so minus 2 now subtract 2 from the right very good so we have x to the fourth minus 4x squared and now this is minus x then 4 minus 2 is plus 2 and this is equal to x minus x is 0 and 2 minus 2 is 0 so I'm going to be having 0 on the right hand side now notice that from the first two terms x squared is common so we can actually factor out x squared so let's factor out x squared open brackets uh, x to the fourth divided by x squared I have x squared minus 4x squared divided by x squared, I have 4. And then minus. Now I'm going to be putting this inside of a bracket. So open a bracket, x. So minus times plus is minus 2. Very good. And this is equal to 0. So we have x squared times x squared minus 4 is actually a perfect squared so we can write it as 2 squared very good minus this is x minus 2 equal to 0 now notice that what i have inside of this bracket is difference of two squares well difference of two squares has property of a squared minus b squared is equal to a minus b times a plus b so we're going to be writing this in this form so we have x squared 
this becomes x minus 2 times x plus 2 minus this is x minus 2 equal to 0 very good now notice that x minus 2 is common so we can factor out x minus 2 and then open up a bracket now x squared times x minus 2 times x plus 2 divided by x minus 2 i'll have x squared times x minus 2 sorry x plus 2 very good minus x minus 2 divided by x minus 2 i'll have 1 and then close the final bracket this is equal to 0. now let's open up this bracket so this becomes x minus 2 times x squared times x is x cubed plus x squared times 2 is 2x squared and then minus 1 equal to 0. So we have two cases here. We have the first case we have x minus 2 to be equal to 0. Or the second case, we have x cubed plus 2x squared minus 1 to be equal to 0. So we're going to be solving these cases one after the other. So let's take the first case. So we say case 1. Case 1 is where we have x minus 2 to be 0. In order to get the first root of x, we'll be moving negative 2 to the right hand side. So that this becomes as negative 2 crosses and becomes positive. So this is our first root of x. But we don't know yet if this is actually the correct answer. Let's move forward. Now, considering the second case, so let's say case 2, we have x cubed plus 2x squared and then minus 1 to be equal to 0. Well, this is a cubic equation, and I'm going to be using the factor theorem to solve this. Well, I'll be trying the root of x equal to negative 1. Let's see if I'll be having 0. So, let's try x equal to negative 1. So, this is negative 1 cubed plus 2 times negative 1 squared minus 1 will i be having 0 negative 1 cube is negative 1 plus 2 times negative 1 squared negative 1 squared is 1 times 2 that's 2 minus 1 so negative 1 plus 2 minus 1 gives 0 so that means x plus 1 is a factor x plus 1 is a factor so let's get the order factor in order to get the order factor i'm going to be applying a method where i take the coefficients of each of the terms so the coefficient of x cubed is 1 so i'll take it the coefficient of x squared is 2 so i'll take that but notice that i was supposed to have after x squared i'm supposed to have x as in the power of x is supposed to be 1. But there is no x there. So I'm going to be putting 0. Very good. And then the constant term is negative 1. So I'll draw a line and uh, a table like this. Very good. Now we are using the roots of x equal to negative 1. So what I'm going to do here, I'll drop down this 1. I'll drop this 1. Very good. So, negative 1 times 1 is negative 1. So, 2 minus 1 is 1. Let's go again. Negative 1 times 1 is negative 1. And now, 0 minus 1 is minus 1. And then, negative 1 times negative 1 is 1, which is positive 1. And then, negative 1 plus plus 1 is 0. Very good. 
So we've got the coefficient. These you see here are coefficients of the other factor that we need here. So let's write the other factor. Now, this was x to the 3. But here, we're going to be having x squared. Very good. Remember, the coefficient is 1. And then the next, this is plus 1. The coefficient is 1. Remember, the degree or the power of x reduces. So this is x with a coefficient of 1. And then this is negative 1, which is a constant term, equal to 0. Very good. And now we have two cases. We have x plus 1 to be equal to 0, or we have x squared plus x minus 1 to be equal to 0. Now, we're going to be focusing on these cases one after the other. So let's take this first case. So let's take case 1. So for case 1, we have x plus 1 to be equal to 0. Now, to get another root of x, what we're going to do is to subtract 1 from both sides. So we have x, and then 1 minus 1 is 0. So this is equal to 0 minus 1 is minus 1. So this is another root of x. Very good, too. Although we've already tried it before. So that's another root of x. But we don't know if this is the correct answer, since we have conditions that we need to follow. Now, let's move on to case 2, which is a quadratic equation. x squared plus x minus 1 equal to 0. So this is our second case. I'm going to be using the quadratic formula to solve this. So a is the coefficient of x squared, and that's 1. And then b, ah, what be this? So now, let's move on to our second case, which is case 2. Our case 2 is x squared, which is a quadratic equation, plus x minus 1 equal to 0. Well, we're going to be using the quadratic formula to solve this. So our a is the coefficient of x squared, and that's 1. Our b is the coefficient of x, and that's also 1. But our c, which is a constant term, is negative 1. So since we're looking for x, we use the quadratic formula, so negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So let's substitute into this quadratic formula. So our x will be negative b, so negative b, b is 1, plus or minus the square root of b squared, that's 1 squared minus 4 times a times c times a. a is 1 times c. c is negative 1. Good. All over 2 times a, that means 2 times 1. So let's simplify. We're going to have x to be negative 1 plus or minus the square root of negative this is 1 squared, which gives 1. Now, negative 4 times 1 times negative 1 gives plus 4. All over, 2 times 1 is 2. So this results to x equal to negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 1 plus 4 is actually 5 all over 2. So there are two values of x here. So this is going to be the third root, which is equal to, we'll go with the positive sign. So this is negative 1 plus square root of 5 all over 2. And then lastly, which is the last root, this is negative 1. This time go with the negative minus the square root of 5 all over 2. Very good. Like I said, we're going to try each of these roots of x to see which one is the correct answer. All right, so remember the given condition. Uh, we said here is a positive square root and it is a real solution.
no complex solution. So in order to get a real solution from here, that means what I have inside of the square root, which is x plus 2, must be bigger than or equal to 0. And then there is another thing, which is what I have here on the left-hand side must be positive. Why? Because this is a positive square root. So it means that the left-hand side, which is x squared minus 2, must be bigger than or equal to 0. So let's take that into consideration. Remember the four roots we have? We have the first root to be equal to 2, the second root to be equal to negative 1, the third root to be equal to negative 1 plus the square root of 5 over 2, and then the fourth root to be negative 1 minus the square root of 5 all over 2. Now, we're going to be trying these roots one after the other. When I put 2 here, 2 plus 2, it gives 4, which is bigger than 0. Very good. But what about here? So when I put 2 here, 2 squared is 4 minus 2 is also bigger than 0. So this is a, is a, is a take, is a correct solution. What about negative 1? When I put negative 1 here, negative 1 plus 2, it is actually positive, bigger than 0. Very good. Now, what about here? Negative 1 squared is 1. So 1 minus 2 is negative 1. So that is less than 0. So it is not a take. So we're not going to be taking this. All right, let's now focus our attention on this. Well, this is approximately 0 0.618. And if I have to put 0 0.618 here, plus 2, uh, well, this is positive, bigger than 0. But what if we have to put it here, 0 0.618 squared, we give a value that is lesser than 2. And if we have to subtract 2 from a lesser value, we have a negative value. So this is not a take. We have to leave this. What about this? Well, this is approximately negative 1.618. And if we have to square that here, it gives a value that is bigger than 2. And when you subtract 2 from a bigger value, you have a positive answer. Very good. So is a take here. What about here? Negative 1.618 plus 2 will surely give you a positive value. So it is a tick. So this is a tick. So we have two solutions from here. We have one of the solution to be 2 and the other solution to be negative 1, negative square root of 5, all over 2. Well, feel free to share your ideas in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed this video and have learned something from this video, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't, turn on the notification bell so you don't miss my upcoming videos. And like I always say, until next time, take care.